One of the critical tools for the first half of this course is going to be understanding consumer surplus. It's going to be a measure of how price changes affect consumer welfare. And that's particularly important in trade policy because almost everything that you do with trade policy is going to affect uh, the prices and that's going to affect consumers. So let's first begin with a definition of what consumer surplus means. It's the difference between what consumers were willing to pay and what they were what they actually paid in the market. So the excess of consumer benefit over the consumer cost. So let's take a look at a demand curve and build up a consumer surplus story within this. So we've got a demand curve, standard uh, setup with price on one axis and quantity on the other. And we've got a uh, market price. And what a demand curve represents is really the willingness of consumers to pay for a product. So the marginal benefit of the first unit is going to be the height of the demand curve. And that's that's really important. So the the demand curve is always going to give at any particular quantity the height of the demand curve is what consumers were willing to pay for this product. And they may be thrilled if they paid less, but they're willing to pay that amount. In the market, the first unit costs the market price. The marginal cost of buying the first unit is just the price in, that they have to pay to a uh, firm selling this product in the market. So for the first unit, the benefit you get is greater than the cost of buying it. So by all means, buy this product. And in the end, at this price, you will have consumers continue to buy this until the marginal benefit equal the marginal cost, where the height of the demand curve just equals the price. So at three units, we have this marginal condition of marginal benefit equal to marginal cost. The fourth unit will not be purchased because that fourth unit costs that price P1, but the height of the demand curve is less than that. So for that fourth unit, the cost of getting it exceeds any benefit that you would get, don't buy it. Now let's take a look at consumer surplus. Again, that's defined as the difference between what consumers are willing to pay and what they had to pay. Now the total benefit of consuming 10 units is going to be the area under the demand curve. Critical point. At a quantity of 10 units, the area under the demand curve, A plus B, is the total willingness that consumers had to, to buy these 10 units. Now fortunately for the consumers, they only had to pay the market price of $20. So the amount that consumers had to pay, price times quantity, is 200. That's depicted in this graph by area B. So the difference between what they were willing to pay, A plus B, and what they had to pay, B, is that consumer surplus of A. So it's very important that you understand this basic graph because that is the going to be the, uh, the central part of everything we do on measuring consumer surplus effects in trade. A lot of students tend to think of consumer surplus as a totally abstract notion with not much connection to the, the real world. But I think it really is as concrete as anything, including uh, a $5 bill in your pocket. If you have ever walked into a store with the intention of buying something and then found out that the price was lower than you expected it to be, that is consumer surplus. You were willing to pay more than what you had to pay. Now, it may be sometimes hard to measure exactly what your total, your maximum willingness to pay for some product would be. But there is some price that would do so. And if you pay a price below that, that's consumer surplus. So for me, I am hopelessly addicted to caffeine first thing in the morning. Probably be willing to pay $6 for a cup of coffee. If I can walk into a coffee shop and get it for $2, 
That's money in my pocket that I was willing to part with, but don't have to because of the, uh, the market price. So that is $4 in my pocket that I would not have if the market price were higher. That's real, and that's consumer surplus. Now, we'll often want to be thinking about the change in consumer surplus. In this particular depiction, at a price of P1, you consume Q1 in the area under the uh, demand curve, EFG, is going to be the total consumer surplus. I'm sorry, the total uh, willingness to pay. F plus G is how much they had to pay, price times quantity. And so we have this area E, which is the consumer surplus. So just like we did before, just give you another, another example. So that is, the consumer surplus is typically, at least with in the things that we're going to be doing, depicted by this triangle um, up, in the, uh, up in the corner. But it's important that you understand where that uh, comes from. Now, if the price goes down to P2, you're going to have more consumers buying this product. It's going to be, make consumers happy. The, the change in consumer surplus really is a measure of how much happier they are. So at price P2, you're going to get Q2 units consumed now. That is the, that's where the price equal to marginal benefit. We've got the total willingness to pay is the area under the demand curve. It's E, F, H, G, J. So that, that total area. Consumers had to pay price times quantity, G plus J. So really done exactly the same way. With a consumer surplus, again a triangle. The difference between those, that, that willingness to pay is EFH, so the change in consumer surplus from price P1 to price P2 is F plus H. Now, let's give you a quick trick on how to remember this. So we've got this uh, consumer surplus, FH, which we defined a moment ago. And a simple way to remember this is the following. The change in consumer surplus is always going to be the area defined by the change in the price over to the demand curve. Okay, so what do I mean by that? <clears throat> the difference in price is, the, is P1 to P2, okay, that vertical distance. The area over to the demand curve is given by this trapezoid. So F plus H is the change in consumer surplus. If the price falls, it's an, in, an increase in consumer surplus. If it was a price rise from P2 to P1, it would be a loss of consumer surplus. In virtually every example that we're going to be doing, it, the change in consumer surplus is that trapezoid. Now, please bear in mind that the level of consumer surplus and the change in consumer surplus is not the same thing. The change in consumer surplus is this trapezoidal area. So here's just another example. We've got a price, we've got a demand curve, we've got a bunch of letters. So in this instance, the consumer surplus is going to be FG. It's this triangle. Total willingness to pay, FGCE. What they had to pay was CE. So consumer surplus is F plus G. Another example. Here we can think about the consumer surplus at, uh, the, at price P1 is area A, that triangular area. The consumer surplus at P2, it's another triangle. And that's given by A-G-H-E-L. So I'm not going through all the steps, but you start to get, hopefully, the, uh, the flavor of this. The change in consumer surplus, G-H-E-L. Once again, the area defined by the 
change in the price, okay, the P1 to P2, over to the demand curve. Once again, a trapezoid. So once you get the, the, the gist of this, it's actually quite easy to identify the change in consumer surplus, even when you've got very complicated graphs. So it's really worth your while to spend some time on this. Now there are a couple of other things that I'd like to do here. And you're really interpreting various components of the change in consumer surplus. This will actually be quite helpful in tying this to real world uh, situations. So let's imagine that the price falls from P1 to P2 in this, uh, in this graph. We've got a consumer surplus increase of BC, okay, the change in the price over to the demand curve. Now let's break up these two effects, BC, into components. You had some consumers who bought this product at the original price of P1. So you, Q0 in fact. So those people bought this product, were willing to buy this product at the, at the higher price. They paid the area of this box, price times quantity. So before the price change, this is what con these consumers were paying to the, uh, to the market. After the price change, these people are still in the market. They're still buying this amount. Now they have to pay the new price times the quantity. So for these people, this is manna from heaven. They were willing to buy it at P1. They're now getting to buy it for P2 instead. So B is this consumer surplus increase associated with consumers that were in the market before and are in the market afterwards. This is pure benefit to them. They haven't done anything different. They're buying the same amount. They're getting, uh, they don't have to pay as much. So that's, a, that's part of the consumer surplus. We also have new consumers that come into the market who now uh, consume Q2. So the, the new consumers is the distance between Q0 and Q2. These are the people who are able to come into the market now with the lower price. How much did those consumers benefit? They gained the area under the demand curve for the increase in consumption from Q0 to Q2. So this is the extra benefit, total benefit, to consumers, new consumers in the market. They only had to pay the market price times the quantity. So C was the benefit, the consumer surplus associated with new customers. C is the increase in consumer surplus who are now able to buy the good. And this says not, but it's, it should be who are now able to buy the good. It's those consumers, if you will, priced into the market. Now, it would be worthwhile to think about how this all is affected if the price were to go from P2 to P1. It's a good way to check whether or not you understand it. Similar interpretation, but everything in reverse. So for example, if the price went up from P2 to P1, C is going to be the consumer surplus lost for consumers priced out of the market. So do that on your own. So in summary, we've defined consumer surplus in this video using the idea of total benefit compared to the cost to consumers. And very important for many of the things we're going to be doing in a trade course is considering how this change in price affects consumer surplus. As I mentioned before, one of the critical aspects of trade is that 
trade policy, integration into the world economy changes prices. And that means that consumers are affected by changes in prices. And the, the change in consumer surplus is how we measure that. And we also broke consumer surplus up into two parts that we could interpret based on consumers that were in the market before and after the price change and consumers who either enter the market with a lower price or consumers who leave the market because of a higher price. Once again, spend time on this video, get it down because we'll be using this tool again and again.